Well, so hello everyone. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, the modeling that we did on the distribution of what we so-called uh, tabs. And for, for now on, every time that I say tabs, I'll be referring to, <clears throat> to this group of elements, tellurium, arsenic, bismuth, antimony, uh, also selenium into the Marensky reef of the Bushwood. And also then talk about the implications that we think for the collection of PGEs, uh, not only at the Marensky, but in a general manner. So the first main question that we could pose, and I guess the only one that we try to tackle here is how the chalcophile elements are actually collected. We have two main models that have been discussed. It's one is that they can be chemically collected. This means they have high partition coefficients. Then they have an affinity. They are all chalcophile elements. Then they are collected into sulfide liquid and they are dissolved into the sulfide liquid. And we have a physically model proposed that uh, actually PGEs together with some of the tabs, some of the semi metals they will form actually nanoclusters into the liquids and then they have uh, due to surface ab absorption and they will be collected by the sulfide liquid. So in one of these models we're basically looking at the per different partition coefficients. In the other one we're looking at surface properties of the of these nanoclusters. So how can we test this? And our idea is, okay, we can take elements with different partition coefficients. We can look at their concentrations in the initial liquids, what should be this parental liquids. Then we model their chemically controlled uh, distribution. Let's say we use different partition coefficients and see if we can uh, reproduce what we find in different uh, deposits that we see. Uh, more specifically here, we look at the PGE tabs and selenium, they have different partition coefficients we're going to see in a while. We looked at their concentrations in the marginal rocks of the bushwood, which give us a proxy for our initial liquids. We use their different partition coefficients and then we can compare with the Marensky reef. So we're going to take from the parental liquid to the deposit and then we see if we can reproduce or not simply with different partition coefficients and then we can understand the distribution of these elements. So first of all, when we say different partition coefficients, we're saying it's the affinity between sulfide and silicate liquid. Everyone is aware, but we can divide uh, all the chalcophile elements that are collected by a sulfide liquid. That's the most accepted model, I guess. Uh, and they can be slightly, moderately, or highly chalcophile, depending on their partition coefficients. Slightly chalcophile elements uh, have very low partition coefficients. Highly chalcophile, as we see the PGEs, they have very highly high partition coefficients into a sulfide liquid. And then our, the tabs, the elements that we said, some of them like tellurium are very highly chalcophile, bismuth moderately, but arsenic and antimony. And these are also elements that are being frequently associated to these clusters. They are only slightly chalcophile elements. So for our initial liquid, I'm not have, I won't have to talk thanks, thanks to Wolfgang. He already talked a lot about the Bushfield. So we basically took the rocks from the marginal zone of the intrusion, mainly from the eastern lamp. So they're distributed at the, the contact of the of the bushfield. And why do we do this? Is that uh, these rocks, some of them have quenched like tank textures, some nice flow textures, mainly orthopyroxene, um, plagioclase, some kind of no rights, also more granular rocks, orthopyroxene, uh, plagioclase, clinopyroxene, like some gabbro no rights. And this can be divided into B1, B2, and B3, depending on their relation to the stratigraphy of the intrusion. And then can be used as proxy for the initial liquids. I mean, the composition of these rocks are normally assumed and they have been studied as some uh, reasonable liquids, parental liquids for, for the crystallization of the bushel. So we looked at the distribution of tabs in these rocks. And here, these are mental normalized spidergrams. We put the tabs, these elements, as you say, in the increasing partition coefficient. So lower partition coefficient, moderate and high partition coefficient. And why do we do that is if we look at, for instance, and a reference for an upper cr continental crust, the only slightly chalcophile elements, they're enriched in crust relative to, to the more chalcophile elements. When we look at some of the, our rocks that we see, like this B1 part of the marginal rocks, they show a clear sign of uh, upper continental crust assimilation, and they fall between uh, what will be a more primitive liquid, the comatiite, 
and the upper continental crust, and we can model them with a mixture of 30% of upper crust with initial, let's say, more primitive like liquids. Whereas some of these B2 and B3 rocks, they have more flattened shapes, more relative to close like this, more primitive mantles. Maybe you have some bismuth anomalies, which would suggest a lower crust assimilation, but that's not uh, something that's clear for us. But they are more primitive like signatures. Now we look at the distribution in the Maransky Reef itself. That's an Impala section that we did. That's a distribution from PGE, from previous works, and we did the tabs. And there are a few things here. Okay, we have the typical section. We have like melanorites, no rights above the reef interval, which is in gray here. We have some new local no rights at the bottom and the typical Maransky interval with two chromatite layers. And we see, okay, sulfur values, they increase in the reef. That's kind of obvious. Everyone's saying that PGEs will follow that. It's just mimicking the distribution of sulfides. And for our elements, we see, okay, selenium, tellurium, bismuth, these more chalcophile elements, they also follow the PGEs and sulfur as will be expected. But then when we start looking at some other of these elements is less chalcophile like arsenic, it completely do not follow the distribution of sulfides. And also antimony, it completely do not follow the distribution of, of, uh, of sulfides as well. And that's interesting because, I mean, from here we can already see, okay, we saw that arsenic is one of these elements that's frequently associated with this cluster formation. And then if these clusters are collecting the PGEs, then okay, then why arsenic is not following the PGEs as well? Why is not higher in the samples from the reef? And there is a correlation as well that I would say between arsenic and antimony and more incompatible elements such as hafnium into the, into the section. Another interesting thing is then we look at the ratio over the total tabs, over total PGEs across the entire section. I mean, above the section in rocks that are barren, you have this ratio round from two to five, Whereas when you get into the reef, these ratios go from like uh, below like 0.1 or 0.01. And that's particularly important because this frequent association of tabs and PGEs and we we'll say these clusters are these proto PGMs. Normally what you will have is you have associations of one to one or one to two uh, in terms of ratios when you find. And when you find in the reef, you're actually finding ratios of 0.1 or 0.01. So you do not have enough tabs to control all the distribution of PGEs, just looking at the whole rock data. And finally, and just another example of the different partition coefficients, selenium tellurium ratios. Tellurium is way more compatible than selenium, is more chalcophile than selenium. So when you get inside of the reef, these ratios decrease a lot. So just to show that the distribution in whole rock is mainly composed, uh, controlled by different partition coefficients. This is also illustrated when you look at the correlation of sulfur, it's more compact and more chalcophile elements, selenium, tellurium, they correlate well with sulfur. The empty samples are from the samples above the reef. They're not mineralized. The field, sample, field samples are from the, the reef interval. And then we see arsenic and antimony. You actually have no correlation with the sulfur contents and arsenic is actually higher inside, above the reef relative to the reef itself. Then we start investigating where were these elements if they're not controlled by sulfides. Uh, one place that we started looking, okay, let's look at silicates. Some of them we look at biotite, for instance, or potassium phlogopite could be referred as well. And we found that, okay, we have a correlation, as I said, in whole rock with things like hafnium and antimony. Uh, like incompatible elements with arsenic and antimony, but also within biotites, uh, phlogopites, you see that arsenic and antimony are being hosted by these minerals. So there's more incompatible elements, they're remaining within the more mica-like, and they're not being controlled by sulfides. So, okay, so we try to look at uh, an initial mixture of uh, B1 and B2 magmas. Uh, this has been shown as a potential, as a good liquid initial liquid for the crystallization of the Bushveld, of the Merensky Reef, the critical zone. And this has been shown based on major and trace elements as well. So we use the signal mixture to see if we could reproduce the tabs distribution. And here in the model, we have all the crosses, all the X's are actually the measured concentrations and the red ones are the model results. So for all the elements, we see that the model results and the, the crosses, they do follow each other. So we can reproduce. The difference is between the blue and the yellows. The blue 
is the, is the contribution from the silicate liquid, from the residual silicate liquid, and the yellow is the distribution from a sulfide liquid. So we see that for more chalcophile elements, all the distribution is being controlled by a sulfide liquid. Whereas when you look at arsenic and antimony, for instance, the distribution of a sulfide liquid does not match what we observe. I mean, this is, if we, these elements will be collected and controlled by a sulfide liquid, then they will be like completely in this distribution. And what we see is something that is very different. So just say that we have to be mainly accounted by the silicate proportion for these elements. They're not being collected by a sulfide liquid. We could go back to our question then to sum it up is that, okay, so we free, these things are chemically collected. They would only obey their different partition coefficients. That's what seemed to be what we observed. Whereas when you look at if we are being, I'm not saying that let's say these clusters, they do not exist. They've been observed in many ways. I'm just trying to understand the dominant factor controlling the distribution of PGEs and the semi metals And it seems that if you, this, clusters of PGE will be mainly association of metals, then why some of them will be being collected from the silicate liquid and others wouldn't they? I mean, if they are associated and always, and always stabilized by them. So that's something that we could not understand. That's why we start favoring more this first option of a more chemically controlled model. So <clears throat> if you remember nothing from this presentation, just remember this, which is, we got the concentrations of semi-metals from the marginal zone, which gives us a proxy for the initial liquids and the Bushveld. We modeled the distribution of the, in the Marensky Reef using this distribution. And uh, we can see that more chalcophile elements like platinum, palladium, the PGEs, tellurium, bismuth, selenium are controlled by sulfide minerals, whereas the other elements, arsenic and simony, they are not affected by the presence of sulfide minerals. Therefore, we do not think that these elements are normally associated as clusters and being major, the major model for their collection. If anyone is interested in anything from this talk, there are one paper in Geochemica that we talk uh, specifically about the role of tabs during the formation of PGE deposits, and specifically in the Bushvans to water, and the concentrations of these elements in the marginal zones is also published in Litus in case anyone has interest. If you have any questions, just drop them on the chat or just send me an email. I'll be more than happy to reply. Thank you.